he said here that it has been who can we add in conference realignment. It will eventually be who can we drop. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again. Happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on everything college football, pro football, Madden, EA college football, NFL draft, anything related to American football, hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also, the like button, too. Again, we are nine away from a thousand subscribers. Hit it, baby. You know you want to, man. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, we're talking about college football today again because there's so much news going around. The Pac-12, ESPN is out on the Pac-12. Oh, my God, what's going to happen with Oregon and Washington? Blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. There was a video by our dear friend, Mr. Joel Klatt, that I think has the biggest thing that we are not talking about right now. And again, lots of people are talking about the ACC. Lots of people are talking about, oh, is Oregon and Washington? Oh, is the Big Ten going to go east, try and get North Carolina, something like that? Again, those conversations are important in the near term. And again, I say near term because that could be 10, 15 years away. That's that's how the, you know, the ACC deal is the situation right now. However, Joel Klatt says, I kind of see where this is eventually going. And we're going to go into a video here. I'm not going to play it, obviously. I want to go to the point here where he brings up one of the best points I've thought of. And I've been thinking about it for a while. Wasn't able to articulate it as well as the Godfather. Here we are on YouTube for CFB on Fox. And again, it says here, the future of conference realignment and how NIL has created a golden age for college football. And again, I actually like what he has said here because he, he brought up later in the video, the second half of this video, he talks about how basically it used to be, you know, big time programs were able to hoard players here and there. Now players can transfer right away, not get punished, leave when their coach you know, gets fired, something like that, and go and play right away. It's going to push itself in a situation where a lot of people might even potentially want to stay in pro or in college football because let's just say say you're kind of a cusp on the cusp of the NFL you might be a seventh round draft pick something like that undrafted here and there you stay in college build up yourself for another year add to that product get more game experience a lot of good things from that however right here about 741 in the video he brings up one of if not the most important things in college football as an example right now we're going to go to some of his quotes here because one of them is again an absolute bombshell that will eventually happen might not be soon but will eventually happen. Let's get into that real quick. So these are some of the quotes that he had directly. He says, basically, on term, in terms of realignment, he says, this is never going to stop. So as much as people like to think, oh, yeah, we're going to get a power to break it. We're going to get Big Ten's going to get this. S is going to get that. Big 12's going to get that. Bup, 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 bup. But then it's going to stop? No. That's not going to stop, okay? It's going to continue to happen, continue to happen, even when the SEC and the Big Ten get what they want. We'll get into that in a second why here. He said here that it has been who can we add in conference realignment. It will eventually be who can we drop. And again, for those of you out there who's a fan of the, a middling or a lower level SEC or a Big Ten team, that has to absolutely shake your boots because you're like, wait, wait, what, 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 what can we drop? What, what, drop, 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 drop. Why, why, why would you want to do that? Well, he goes into the justification here. He says that there is not an unlimited source of money and the money has to get smarter. So as an example right now, I know a lot of people are absolutely just dogging the Pac-12 because they took too long on their conference or their, their negotiation. The Big 12 went in ahead of them and got that deal done. Brett Yormark is a very savvy businessman and the Pac-12 is kind of middled. We're going to go with the CW. We're going to go with streaming. Is ESPN in? ESPN might be out. There's a bunch of questions with that whole situation. However, and again, we're seeing this especially right now with higher you know interest rates. But again, that, that could eventually go away. I'm just talking talking about this in relative terms right now is that basically we're coming into what he calls poor economies of scale. Basically what he's saying here is uh, he's having a lot of these bigger teams in these conferences who are really carrying the load. As he said in the video out there that, you know, again, the link will be in the description here. As he said in that video, he says a lot of the bigger level teams in these conferences are carrying most of the load. And again, we come back to this, the same situation with Texas and Oklahoma in the big 12. They're like, why are we here sharing all this load? Why don't we just, you know, go over there into the SEC where we can be properly compensated? Again, that's a very true situation. That is also happening in the SEC and the Big Ten. Again, we might not want to talk about it, but that's totally happening here. He basically said that having XYC schools is diluting the conference. So what's going on here? When you think about college football, and again, I want to make sure we go over limitations because as much as we'd like to think that there's going to be a 60-team conference, everything you're going to break away, this is going to go over here, that's going to go over there. There's, there's so many things that we can hypothetically think, think about here. I want to make sure we talk about two big limitations with conference realignment going forward. There are only so many games to play and TV slots to fill. 20, 24, 30-team conferences will have a lot of quote-unquote fat 
on them. I'm going to go into that fat later on here. A couple of you SEC and Big Ten teams aren't going to be happy with this. But again, this is just is what it is. You can't benefit from it on one hand and then eventually have it come to you and then get mad at it. It happened to help you out before. It happened to hurt you out later. Whatever. We'll continue. Nine conference games will be pushed back on by the teams. And again, I said it will be pushed back on. It will eventually cave in because the pressure to have those teams is just going to be too much to bear. So big time programs do not like true away games. Alabama, Michigan, ETC. I do know that Alabama played at Texas this last year. I will let you know that Alabama in their five away games, they had last season, the five true away games. They were one and four against the spread. Now they were still, you know, four and one of those games, but at the same time, you can definitely tell that they definitely underperformed in all of those games because true away games are tough. Michigan this last year had the most pathetic schedule you've ever seen. And you guys remember my previous video here before where the big 10 is removing their P five non-conference requirement. They used to have, you have to play a power five team or the exception, like, you know, Michigan played UConn, which counted towards a power five opponent, but Anyways, they're removing that situation because if they accept the fact that they're going to have nine conference games, which the money will make them, we will see more SEC and now Big Ten crap weeks. Again, we're going to see that coming forward. So with that situation going on here, we need to make sure that whatever our conference games are, they need to be quality, no fat on them. Well, who could that fat be? So again, this right here, and again, all these teams that are listed here, if you guys don't like me, just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That's all I care about. Okay, so here we go. So when we talk about the fat of the SEC and the Big Ten, from the SEC's perspective, it's got to be Vanderbilt, okay? More AAU additions reduce their appeal to the conference. So again, what you see here is, for the most part, all these conference realignment additions to the SEC and the Big Ten, for the most part, have been AAU institutions. I think Nebraska joined, and then they got dropped. But again, they were close to that. Uh, but again, the fact that the more and more quality schools, Texas is a really, really good school. Oklahoma is solid. Texas is an incredible national university. The more and more they invite those teams, the more and more Vanderbilt becomes mm, expendable. The, for Missouri here, Missouri was added for a market also because uh, they wanted to make sure they got St. Louis, you know, and they wanted to make sure they could have those regions out there. But the more and more you add those, you know, quality teams that necessarily aren't in good markets, the more you don't really care about the market. I mean, if you think about the situation here, Oklahoma is in the Oklahoma City, you know, Norman's out just outside of Oklahoma City, and then Austin is in Austin, Texas. If you think about that, that is 39 and 41 respectively in terms of media market size. Those are two of the most valuable programs in college football. So going forward, again, at the very top, media market is not going to matter so much. Missouri doesn't really bring in that very many viewers as a new market, but for the most part in the future, we need to see good matchups, not big cities where you're located in. And then for Mississippi State and Kentucky, history means nothing to TV partners. We already know that. Again, Kentucky and Mississippi State are actually doing pretty solid for viewership. But if we're talking about diluting some money here, and, and we're talking about the SEC wanting to add in North Carolina and potentially Florida State, all of a sudden Vanderbilt, Missouri, Mississippi State, and Kentucky get a little expendable from the Big Ten's perspective here. And you know the Big Ten's whole Kevin Warren mission, this and that, was to make sure you could add big media markets. We want New York, we want LA, we want DC, we want Chicago, we have those markets. However, if we're going on into the future here, Rutgers, the market is mattering less and less up for good matchups. Nobody's clamoring to watch Rutgers. As much as it is cool to have that media market out there, what it's not that good if they only average 800,000 fans a game, which is less than BYU. BYU is in Provo, which is outside of Salt Lake. But again, it's just got a lot of fandom out there. BYU is more important than Rutgers in conference realignment. Sorry, not sorry. Continuing on here, same with Illinois, Indiana, and Purdue. Again, the same kind of the same situation here. The Big Ten is a little bit different than the SEC because the Big Ten has kind of an AAU requirement for their schools. Like I said, uh, um, Nebraska was, and then they no longer are now. But you see the fact that history means nothing to TV partners, and more AAU additions reduce their appeal to the conferences. So if the Big Ten can add a North Carolina, the Big Ten, Big Ten can add a UW. I know that Notre Dame is an is a, a AAU institution, but they would make the exception. They would make an exception for them in a second. So those are the teams right here. Again, we're talking about the situation here. I think we've been overthinking about this 20 team conferences, this 24, this 30. I think that what's going to happen in the future, as we're seeing here, even with these conferences being, you know, a little frugal with the Pac-12. I know, oh, it's the Pac-12. But what's happening here is there's a limited number of dollars here. A lot of these streaming partners don't actually make any money. The money is going to need to be more and more efficient in the future. This right here are the, we're going to say, less efficient members of the biggest conferences in the college football. Though don't get me wrong. Vanderbilt, Missouri, Mississippi State, Kentucky, Rutgers, Illinois, Indiana, and Purdue are really solid schools. But do I think they're in the top 15 to 20 schools or, you know, in terms of viewership or, or fandom in the country? No. 
So really quickly here, what does the future hold? Now, for me, and this is a couple of my opinions here, I've got two partners in within here in terms of what I think is going to happen and then what I want to have happen later on at the end of this video here. So what do I think the future is going to hold? After the ACC battle finishes, remember here, this is the far future here. This is not going to happen anytime soon. I think we're going to go through the ACC and this and that, blah, blah, blah. So all that stuff is going to happen with that big battle. What's going to happen, though, is once the dust settles from that, and let's just say there is the Big Two, the Big Ten, the SEC, they've got all these schools, all this quality, quality content. Well, they're, the TV partners are going to start to apply pressure on being more, uh, we're going to say, efficient with their TV dollars. The TV market will become less important in detail at the top of conference realignment. And again, you saw this, how the fact that, you know, the American copied the Big Ten's, you know, conference realignment perspective here where they added big time, you know, cities with small time programs. North Texas, we had FAU, we had, you know, uh, at UT San Antonio, schools like that. However, at the top, it's just going to be, do people watch you? Yes or no? That's going to be the situation here. Then there will also be a stronger and stronger pressure to a football break away from the NCA or at least be treated Differently, academic association like the Big Ten Academic Alliance will be preserved. And again, for those of you out there saying, oh, well, the Big Ten needs their academic, you know, uh, preservation. I'll tell you, if the money gets right, they will let that go. Also, Notre Dame's not in the AAU, okay? Remember, they, they were number one in their, their mission for conference realignment was Notre Dame. Didn't happen because at the same time, those schools have to agree to that. But football will be treated as a separate entity. I, too, I do totally think that that is going to happen. You could still, you know, be... You know, up to date with Title IX rules, making sure there's more, there's just as many male scholarships for athletics as there are female scholarships for athletics. But at the same time, a separation for football is not unheard of. Part two of what do I think the far future holds? It says, even with consolidation, there is not enough justification for a power two breakaway from a quality product perspective. So it says right here, in terms of revenue, the top six teams in terms of revenue from the bottom, or let's just say the top six from the bottom 100 schools, plus the top six from the top 30 schools in terms of revenue, is a better football product in terms of a playoff than the top 12 from the top 30 alone. Think of TCU, Utah, Oregon State, Baylor, ETC going forward. So like I said, if you had to pick between those two and make a playoff, the top 12 of the top 30 or the top six from the bottom 100 or in the top six from the top 30, the top six in the top 30 would be the best. The top six of the top 100 and the top six of the top 30 is a better product than just the top 12 from the top 30. I'm telling you right now, that is totally true. Continuing on here, it says there will still be a demand for at least four conferences, and I would bet five. Remember here, we're all operating on the understanding that conference realignment is eventually going to get to 20 team conferences, 25 team conferences, 30 team conferences. I think these TV partners are going to start to apply pressure, as Joel Klatt has said himself. They need to be more efficient. They need to make sure they go through about this the right way. So... I think that, you know, 14 is a pretty easy number. 14 uh, team conference allows you three guaranteed rivals every year. You split the other five every other year. So you play everybody every two years, everywhere, every four, and have eight conference games in addition to a conference championship. If you have 16, 16 is three guaranteed rivals every year, plus six and six every other year. You play everyone every two years, everywhere, every four, and you play nine conference games. 20 teams, the math gets a little bit weird. 25 teams, the math gets definitely goofy. 30 teams is ridiculous. I think that what's going to happen eventually is that some of these conferences are going to start to kick people out because remember, it's happened before. So remember here, this is a small example here, but the Temple Owls, it says right here, the Owls were a football-only member of the Big East from 1991 to 2004. Temple was expelled from the league due to a vote, due to a lack of a commitment to the football program from university officials. And again, if you see that there, I know that Purdue tries their best. Illinois tries their best. They actually had a pretty good year this last year. Illinois did. But at the same time, if they had to choose between the top of the remaining conferences outside of the Big Ten and possibly losing Rutgers, Indiana, Purdue, this or that, the Big Ten, if it meant more money, will absolutely listen to that situation, possibly even pull a situation like this. So we know that conferences are definitely willing to vote people out, whether or not it's going to happen in the Big Ten or the SEC. I think the money will have to push that. And again, the money will eventually push that is what I'm betting here. And then last but not least, if super conferences push, it pushes continue. And again, so let's just say I'm completely wrong. They continue that unequal revenue sharing will come. I'm probably going to make a, v a video on that in the future. All right, so what do I think needs to happen? And part of this is me, part of this is Joel Klatt. The first one here, it says the CFB needs to pull in the same direction. Again, college football overall. Either CFP takes control of the college football playoff. They're an entity that's already overseeing much of you know college football, takes control of the sport, or they appoint a commissioner slash central body for 
the sport. So again, right now, the, the rules, the NIL, this and that with college football, it's just completely different compared to women's soccer or men's lacrosse or this or that. It's just completely different. The money is so great. It's so different. It needs to be treated as such. You could still be in line with Title IX you know, regulations to make sure that women and men have equal opportunity for sports scholarships. However, if we're trying to pretend like men's football and women's volleyball are the same, you're crazy. And again, what needs to happen here? So the first one right there was what's from Joel Clapp. The whole sport needs to pull in the same direction. The second one here is my perspective here. I've had it before. It would solve a lot of ills. A promotion slash relegation you know, system would solve a lot of worries and externally promote quality uh, matchups. So remember here, a lot of times, a lot of these programs, the most important thing in college football to have is an administration that wants to be good at the sport. If you don't have that, your coach doesn't have the sport, you're told, you're, you're, you, know, you don't really have the, the funds to kind of go out there and be successful in a lot of different ways. The most important thing is to have... Well, you could argue maybe that the fan support, but the most important is administrative support, then fan support, then facilities, this and that region, blah, blah, blah. That all kind of falls down from there. So with this, this is an external, you know, a motivation to make sure that you are making sure that your team is, is performing on the field as much as you can going forward. So as an example, you know, Texas A&M goes five and seven this last season. They get maybe relegated for a year, still have access to the CFB in terms of the playoff, uh, you know, maybe from a smaller division there. But remember, if we're heading towards a situation where we want to be efficient with our dollars, making sure you have external you know, motivation for this to happen, it would be the biggest thing for them. So that's the world we're headed to right now. As much as we're talking about expansion, 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 Joel Klatt is basically saying there's going to be a point where some of these TV partners are going to be like, why the hell are we playing Rutgers the same as Ohio State? And it's a question I can't really answer there. Oh, we say media market. Oh, we say this or that. They don't really care about that. What they really care about is quality matchups. Like I said before, Texas and Oklahoma are in the 39th and the 41st biggest markets in the country, but they're some of the biggest additions in conference realignment because people watch. You know, like I said, Rutgers, Missouri, Kentucky, Purdue, those schools need to watch their back in the future. Again, it might not be anytime soon, but in the fear, near and maybe even sooner than we think future, conference realignment will lead to conferences losing members on purpose than adding too many all right guys get in the comments right now what do you think about joel clatt what he said like i said i think it's the biggest thing that's come right out right because it's just completely opposite of what everybody's saying everybody's saying expansion expansion 30 super leagues this and that blah blah blah. he's saying eventually we're gonna run into a situation there's only so many games that these kids can play there's only so many ways you know there's only so much time you can have in the season so we got to be efficient with these dollars and some of these conferences might be a little too big all right, guys, get in the comments right now and let me know what you guys think. Remember, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. It's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I am out.